Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Indie Investor Pod. Um, you know, a lot of times on the show, I got some guests that I know is just like, hey, I'm, I'm excited to pick this guy's brain. I'm excited for this guest. That happens all the time. Um, this is no, this is, this is just falls right into those categories. Um, Constantine with CPL was one of those people that like I know of, I feel like I know him just because of transaction we've done or being involved in Cyria, little things here and there. But like, as we get on here and we were talking before the show, I was like, oh man, I really, like, we really don't, haven't spent much time like talking to each other or get to know each other. So um, I'm feeling this episode might run a little bit long, might run into two part or anything, but constantly, I'm very excited to have you on here and kind of pick your brain a little bit about lending and hard money and, and all this stuff. So um, the real estate market is just, it's crazy in Indianapolis right now. Um, and people just need deals. Um, deals are at a higher price and everything. So people just need some money to do those deals and things. So excited to dig in with you on the show today with this, but man, thank you so much for joining me. How's it, how's it going today? Great, great. It's, it's, it's a awesome day here. But before I get into that, I just wanted to say, you know, I'm, I'm just as stoked to be on this podcast. Um, loving the work you guys are doing, um, the content you guys are putting out there. This is this is huge for the community, and it's awesome. It's an awesome value add uh, to people who just want to learn and also uh, expand their real estate knowledge. So again, the content you guys are doing is a great service to the community, and it's it's great to listen to. So I really appreciate. What I really you guys appreciate do. that. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And that's the that's the whole point of this show. That's what we want to do. Is not you know, it's, it's one thing we can promote ourselves. We can talk about us and get ourselves out there, but really it's about educating everybody on kind of what's going on here in Indianapolis, you know, a bunch of different aspects, you know, kind of where the market is and, and things like that. That's what we want to do. It's our way to give back. We've been more than blessed for what we've been able to do in this industry. So hopefully we're able to give back a little bit. And uh, it all comes down to the guests too, of like the guests that all of our, uh, you know, they're the value that all of our guests bring. So no pressure, but I'm, I'm expecting some, uh, some high value stuff today, man. So let's get it done. Let's um, get it done. So let, let's start a little bit with a little bit of just kind of your story. Let's hear a little bit of uh, kind of who you are, your background a little bit, and then how you got into what you're doing today and then running, you know, a lending company for uh, investors here in Indianapolis. Well, uh, just a little bit about me currently. I've got, um, so I'm married to my wife, Lauren. I've got a uh, little girl, her name is Lyris, and she's almost three. And then I got, I just had a, a baby boy, his name's Andreas, and he's four months old. So I'm in the thick of things right now. <laughs> I feel like we just crest the like, maybe getting a decent amount of sleep to function. Yeah. Um, but still just kind of trying to adapt through uh, going from one to two, or now it's like man on man defense. So it's yeah. a, it's now, a I, now I also, I also now why, why you're building your team now a little bit too. So you, you need some <laughs> time. So I understand that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I need all the support I can get. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's, that's me currently. Um, I picked up running, so I've, I've really started um, distance running, and that's that's helped me find a time to clear my mind. Um, and that's me currently. And then yeah. just diving back into a little bit of history, um, went to Purdue University, and um, getting into a little bit how I started in this business. It all really started with a mentor, um, and one of the things that that I, I just love to promote and, and be clear about is that it's amazing how one person can drastically change the direction of your life um, for, for good or for bad. Um, and it really is just even something that someone might say can really affect you in a, in a, in a great way. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being kind of the, the, the epicenter of my story here, it's, it's, uh, that's why I like to tell other people like leadership is really not as grandiose as make, people make it. It's, you know, it's the little things that really change people's lives. Yeah. Um, so this was a, a great example where, um, Walter, Walter Bopp was my, uh, grandfather-in-law. So my wife's grandfather, and, um, he could see my, 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 my drive and my want to learn more about real estate and took me under his wing, taught me a lot of stuff. Uh, he showed me pretty much all spectrums of the real estate world. Uh, what attracted me to him was, you know, he wasn't your typical retired you know, the definition of what you'd think someone was retired, didn't really, didn't golf, didn't travel, didn't fish, didn't hunt, didn't do any of that. But he um, focused on investing his money and what he enjoyed. Yeah. And that was his, uh, that was his pastime. So, um, you know, he'd, he'd uh, invest in anything from cars to, to coins, to stamps, to traditional stocks and bonds, to hard assets in real estate and, and, and also notes and mortgages. 
Um, so he had done his first mortgage in the 80s and um, it was just like a plethora of knowledge. So, uh, you know, showing me kind of how he did, you know, different types of investments and stuff, I was just gravitated towards the notes and yeah. mortgages. It was, I, I, I always loved finance um, and I loved real estate. So this was a great way to, to, to marry them or bring them together. And um, so I got to be mentored by him for about four years. Uh, and then unfortunately he passed um, uh, without, without a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the uh, basically I, I knew more about what he invested in than anyone in the family did. Um, so the long story short, um, my father-in-law and I, uh, picked up the portfolio and it was easy to, it was easy to divest from other things that were you know, more hard assets. But when it comes to notes and mortgages, that's a different animal. Yeah. Um, so we, um, I arranged my schedule when I was up at Purdue to, um, come down Thursday through Tuesday or Thursday through Monday. Um, and, uh, focus on managing this portfolio or, or getting it to the point where it was stabilized and or paid off as much as possible uh, to get the highest return for the family. Yeah. And um, that took about a year. And once that happened, you know, I had created systems and processes. I mean, diving into this was like, <laughs> it's just, it was a roller coaster ride because you know, Walt was old school and yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's just hard to shift your thinking when you're more of like a technology driven guy. Yep. Um, so he actually had cards where there were handwritten amortization schedules of the principal and interest payments like written out. And it just it took us, took me about a year to get that all digitized and get all the files in a digital filing system and um, got it all stabilized. And I was thinking to myself, you know, what, what do I want to do next year when I graduate? Um, I, I had, at that point I had also had an automotive consulting company. Uh, where I brokered cars. So basically through and through, just I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, what, and, were you uh, what, what did you study at Purdue? Business management. Okay. And I'm yeah. in finance. So, um, yeah. So based, based on all the, the hard, the sweat equity I put into this, all these systems and processes, and basically what I learned in a really condensed period of time um, by having to just navigate through these different scenarios quickly, um, it was kind of a no-brainer for me to go into this and, and turn it into something different. I learned a lot of the things that I liked and I didn't like about, yep. you know, how he was conducting his loans. Um, and uh, that's how CPL Investments was born. So I went back to the family and asked if they'd reinvest the funds that I got back for them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's how I, I started my first loan and got my first investors. And um, the rest is kind of history. Yeah, man, that, that's awesome. And it's, I really like that you put that in there too, of just like, it's sometimes it's just that one conversation or that one, you know, networking opportunity, that one connection that you make and that can make all the difference in the world. And you never know kind of when it's going to come about or how it's going to be of, you were probably just trying to get in good with your, you know, your wife's family and listen to, you know, grandfather's story and stuff like that. And all of a sudden that's, that ended up being your life um, and kind of, right. turning, you know, your, your uh, profession and stuff like that. So that, man, that's really cool. It's, and it's so important to kind of just keep an open mind with those connections and stuff too. Just this morning, my, my breakfast is over a guy or with a guy here in um, Indianapolis that has um, basically his businesses is, is hairstyles and uh, or hairstylist places and they do hair extensions and things like that. Like I, I know nothing about any of that stuff, but we we're just talking business and that's what it came into. And that's where that conversation went. And it was so cool to kind of see, you know, his progression, what he's done, but have those conversations about systems and processes and how important that is to, no matter what you're doing, those little things that can make the biggest difference in the world of having handwritten things to going into, okay, now it's digitized. Um, and then next is like, okay, now we can do the automation part of it too. You know, it's all that stuff is, is huge and things. So, um, so really cool for you guys to, to share that story with us. So just kind of, you know, how you kind of came into and how CPL was, was kind of um, grown and, and kind of established and things, but what, so what are you guys doing now? Like where are you guys, what's your guys' specialty? Kind of what are you guys doing for people and, 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 and investors here in Indianapolis? Well, I'd say one of the things that's um, our differentiating factor, and we, we really kind of stumbled upon, stumbled upon it. Um, I knew from the beginning I only wanted to work with investors, you know, short-term loans. Um, so it was your traditional private money or hard money um, structure. Yeah. And it took me probably about three years to figure out how to do this right for the long term. And um, I screwed a lot of things up. 
Um, but what came out of it was, was really our focus. Initially, our focus, you know, when, really when it comes to hard money and, and private lending, um, the deal is really what matters, yeah. right? Like, is this, is this a good deal or not? Uh, and that was, our, that was our focus, right? It's like, okay, good deal, let's do it. Yeah. Now, after a lot, of, a lot of pain stake through seeing our relationship with our borrowers, um, we, we realized that really the borrower is, is the focus and or the relationship. Uh, because we were trying to establish those relationships, but our, our focus was wrong. And what we realize is that, you know, if we, if we focus on the deal, that might not be the right deal for the borrower. If they, you know, they could find a great deal that's outside of their purview or yeah. might take them to a level that they shouldn't be going at at that time. Right. Or it might not really make sense for them. The margins might be too tight. Yeah. So that's, that's the biggest shift that we've had. And that's, I'd say our biggest differentiating factor is that we've really gone from focusing on the deal to our, to focusing on the borrowers and our relationship and also um, just what gives me edification is really coaching. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what we've tried to integrate. And I've been fortunate enough to have just an awesome team that really stands by our values and um, building that relationship is, is relationship. The word relationship is our quote unquote, like umbrella value. Um, so, you know, the, I'm very fortunate that, that, that they've embraced that. And I've seen now that our relationships will basically go from, doing one or two deals, three, four deals to, I mean, we've been doing business with people for 10, 11 years now. Yeah. And it, and it's really because we focused on trying to make them sustainable, right? Yeah. Helping them grow and, and get through the challenges and not take on too much or not do the wrong deal. And sure we've passed on, I mean, our, our, once we made that switch, our, our rate of turning deals down significantly increased, but we're in the long game. Right. We, right. We're, not, we're not in this business to you know, make 20 times earnings in this year. Right. It's it's really we want to be here to, for 20 to 30 years. Yeah. So that's that's probably the biggest uh, value that we add is uh, just our mindset and all of our our structure, our, our processes, our systems, even the, the, the our, our what we charge is based on is this the right fit for the borrower? Okay. Um, and, and when we charge, right, when we basically get the bulk of our money, when they make the bulk of their money. So it's, it's, it's trying to keep that uh, philosophy and, and meld it into every aspect of our business. Yeah. So no, that's great. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those things of, you know, we see it in our business all the time with wholesaling and stuff like that. When, it, when we start focusing on the properties too much or the money too much, that's when we end up, you know, not getting what we need to. We're not helping people out as much as we can. We focus on the relationships and the people. That's, that's, where, that's what we're all in this for. That's what it comes down to. That's sales one-on-one of like, don't worry about the product or the money. You worry about the people and the relationships that you're building off of it and stuff. So um, and it's no business, you know, it does, it, there's no difference in whether what business it is. It always comes down to the people and those relationships and stuff. So let's talk a bit about before, so before you guys kind of made that shift a little bit, let's, let's kind of dig into that where you guys were kind of focused more on the deal itself, what are some of the mistakes that maybe kind of came out of that from maybe your guys' standpoint or even from the, um, from the borrower's standpoint, the investor's standpoint of like, hey, we, we focus too much on the deal and trying to make things fit or trying to make things work here. What are some things that maybe, you know, popped up and, you know, that you guys maybe saw some mistakes in from either side in, that, in those cases? Man, when it comes to mistakes, sometimes the team says I, I'm kind of a Debbie Downer. Uh, but that's, that's what I like to focus on. Cause that's where we learn. Right. I mean, exactly. the stake yeah. is like coal in the, in the engine, just pushing you forward. Um, and uh, we've seen a lot of things that work and a lot of things that don't work. And I, I try to share as much of this with as many people as I meet as possible. So our new borrower meetings, I mean, one of the things we talk about is just try to keep it short and simple. Cause that was one of the struggles for me. Yeah. The, the top five reasons why people fail in this business. And it's, it's, it's not like not everyone is unique in this. It's, it's kind of a, a trend where these the same things just keep coming up over and over again. And we're just trying to prevent that by, by sharing the information. And again, part of the relationship building, I mean, we don't have enough time to make all the mistakes ourselves. So let's learn as many as we can from other people. Right. Um, we're trying to consolidate that with the hundreds of borrowers that we work with into just a refined message to deliver um, to try to, help as many new people who come through our doors as possible. Um, but I'd say 
the biggest issue, um, and Cherie touched on this actually uh, back in June, um, earlier on. Yeah. Uh, she, she did a, it was a great, great podcast. So that's definitely worth a listen. Um, but um, she touched on people overwhelm, overwhelming themselves or you know, trying to bring on too many deals. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's huge in this business. Um, I mean, it's people, people get excited about the kill, right? They want that deal. And, you know, they, they basically say, you know, you make your money on the deal. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I feel like you make your money on how you manage the project. Um, making your money on the deal de- determines how much you make. And then the project determines how much you keep. So how you you manage. I like that. Um, but that's, that's the biggest thing where it's like, trying to trying to control that urge to um you know get bored during the rehab process and want that next you know rehab in the pipeline yeah and it's trying to trying to and the way we coach our, our borrowers with that is to have um, systems in place that will trigger a different lane or a different process right where it's like okay if you find a great deal don't just walk away i mean that's that's hard to do for anyone who's who's driven and motivated to to be successful right maybe try wholesaling it or maybe try turning it into a, a rental, right? Like maybe do a lighter rehab, just try to, try to keep your options open when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. So that's, I think it's that's, one of the, yeah. I think it's one of the biggest things, you know, when you're talking about that of, of bringing on projects, you never know what's going to happen of like, you're kind of maybe in this mindset of like, Oh, I need to do, you know, four flips this quarter. And then you're bringing on these projects all of a sudden, Oh, the labor co- or the, you know, construction costs continue to rise and you're like, Oh, I only have enough money to do, to do three. And it's, it's one of those things like, right. what do I do with this fourth one? That's going to happen. There's going to be something within the market that's going to shift and it's going to change kind of the way it is from now to where it is in 90 days or 180 days and stuff. Um, but also that second part that you mentioned there, like having different exit strategies, knowing kind of what can you do with this? Oh, all right. I don't, I can't quite take on this flip right now. Or I can't quite take on this rehab can I do a little bit of rehab and then just hold it for six months and then I can flip it after that. Or I can put a tenant in there for a year and figure out what to do with it after that. So having multiple exit strategies, I think is always the main thing. And when you're going to this, when you're, when you're starting off and when you're new, yeah, you, you maybe just want, you want to focus on just one little thing and kind of get those first, you know, one to three deals knocked out and do that. But as you continue to grow, opening up those exit strategies are, are, are very important as well. So um, no, man, that's, that's good stuff. I really appreciate that. And then now let's kind of shift to where you guys are, you know, now that you've kind of focused on that relationship a little bit more and you, and you've seen that, is that something that still kind of holds on there? You still have this one pe- this people that are like, oh man, I just, I'm, I need to take, or I need, I need five projects like this, this month or this quarter, or this, you know, this year, whatever it is, is that still kind of the number one driver? That's kind of where people are kind of maybe falling a little bit short or even just, I'd probably back up that back enough with, you know, just over anal or not analyzing it enough or not kind of looking at your timeline well enough and, and stuff like that. Well, I'd say our, our, our process has somewhat, I wouldn't say eliminate, there's, there's no way. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's help offset that a little bit where we try to, we try to bring our borrowers in with, with a vision, right. To kind of, kind of plan out their path, what they want to do, what does success look like to them? and have them draw that out at least conceptually yeah uh, that's i mean zach on our team he's he's great at that i mean he's he's he helps people come up with a plan and then when 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 maybe a new thing comes up it's like okay well let's not say you can't do it let's figure out how we can make it work but it's got to have some sort of plan behind it right yeah. just like you said like you know another thing that could fail is you just don't you don't have enough bandwidth either personally or your your crews right yeah or, you know, you don't have enough funds to get the rehab that you need to, to move quickly, or you didn't get your permits on time or, or all these things. I mean, there's, as long as you have a good plan, um, which we've, we've tried to get, and we, we've been pretty successful at getting our borrowers to come up with that vision early on, where it's like, okay, well, here's what you were trying to do. This is what a home run would look like. Let's stick to that, right? Yeah. Where it's like, I'm going to build this rental portfolio, but I'm going to do flips to get me there, Right. You know, how many do you want to have? What, what's your goal? What do you, when do you want to like, what, what's your, what kind of passive income are you looking for? Yeah. It's, that's how we've combated it um, from the front end. And then when we're dealing with it, it's trying to figure out how, um, how to help people work through it and find different solutions. But I'd say right now, I, still another one that's really big is cash flow. Yeah. 
people managing cash flow is just key for this. Like, you know, you got to have, you know, X amount of dollars in the bank at all times. And if you don't have that in there, that's a sign to stop or slow down. Right. Or, you know, just be patient. Um, I'd say that that's the thing that's, that's the hard, actually segueing into your question and actually answering your question. I'd say the biggest thing right now is people's patience. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they, they, they're, they're hungry for deals and they're not, they're just not being patient. Um, when I first started one of our, um, one of our borrowers, actually, it's just amazing how much you learn from just the people you talk to, but Mm -hmm. one of our borrowers made a great analogy and he's like, Listen, real estate's like being at a bus stop. There's always another bus. Yeah. Don't go hopping on the wrong bus. You're going to yeah. waste your time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the probably right now the biggest thing that's threatening our, our borrowers here is just doing bad deals just for the sake of doing a deal. Um, so yeah, I, like, I like to say that, uh, you know, no deal is better than a bad deal. So it's, you know, kind of having that patience, being able to wait it out. Um, I have to remind myself of that, you know, quite often because I want to have the inventory coming in for our investors and stuff. But no, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's, I think it's the biggest thing that a lot, you know, like you said, a lot of people are just struggling with right now because everybody's so hungry for inventory and everybody, there's so many more, you know, investors that want to get into investing. And, you know, real estate is a hot thing right now. There are a ton of people that are trying to get into it and get started on top of all the people that were already doing it. So when you have, you know, all those people looking for properties. And then you also have just home buyers that they're, you know, they're low on inventory too. They're looking for houses as well. So um, there's a lot of people that are looking for um, all these properties right now. And, and it's causing people to just jump a little bit too quickly or trying to stretch what their, you know, criteria is and kind of come outside of that box a little bit. And, and it, it is affecting people right now. And I know Alicia, the episode that went out today, as we're recording this, Alicia and I touched on that as well. Alicia Drake and I, I'm just like, you don't know what everybody's story is. So that person that's picking up a property right now and you're looking at it's like, Oh, why did, why did Constantine get a deal that I, and I didn't get that deal. Well, Constantine might be able to hold that property for a year or two and then be able to flip it after that or whatever it may be. So um, just being patient, I think is, is so important. Um, and one, one of the things I want to kind of dig into is, um, you know, as we're talking about like just kind of systems and processes and, and, and things like that, you mentioned it on, kind of knowing what their end goal is. That's what we always, you know, kind of one of our philosophies is I don't want to just sell you one house. I want to sell you whatever your goal is. I want to sell you 10 or 15 or whatever it is. I'm not just trying to do one deal with you. Um, I know you guys are looking at that too. You, you mentioned that you have built relationships for people for, you know, 10, 11 years and stuff. And that's, that's, that says a lot about you guys and how you operate, but how important is that for investors? And they might not know right off the bat as they're getting started, but for them to start, Kind of taking like, hey, I my goal was to get to ten deals. All right, let's let's take those ten deals. Let's work backwards. What do we need to do in these first three years? And then what do we need to do this year? What do we need to do in these ninety days? What do we need to do tomorrow? So being able to work with investors on that front and be able to look at their kind of long term goals and break it down for them to figure out what they need to do. Like how was how important is that for number one for the investor to do that, but then for you guys to be right along with the investors through that journey and through that thought process as well. I mean, it's paramount. It it also helps people. It also reminds people that they're achieving their goals, right? Back to what you said. I mean, I I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, this, in this day and age, I mean, I don't want to sound old saying that, but like, (laughs) I mean, our lives are public. Like, you know, with social media, people are seeing, like success stories left and right and the market's hot and they're getting these crazy prices and, and it's, it's making people feel down on themselves. Yeah. So by having that plan and knowing what your goals are, I mean, it's, it keeps you, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you focused. It keeps you, it it just, it just prevents you from getting depressed. Right. Where it's like, why aren't I doing that? Right. It's like, again, you don't know the whole story and that's, that's huge. That's a whole other conversation that we can get into just about social media, but it's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big component. The next thing is, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Right. Right. So that's why it's important for the borrowers. And then it's also important for us because we can see, Hey, this is how we can add the most value. Right. We can, we can see how we fit in with this story or with their, their story and their journey. And it kind of, and it plays into another big tip we like to give people is just, building your team, like, you know, spending the time before, um, before you get into this 
world or this, you know, roller coaster ride again is to build that team with depth. That's the important thing. People will find a contractor and they're like, great, I'm ready. Or they'll find a lender. Great, I'm ready. But the people that really have been, uh, have been successful are the ones that sit down with us and they're like, okay, well, we've got a couple other lenders. We want to add another lender for X, Y, and Z, right? As a backup. Yeah. Right. Or, or like, Hey, after this meeting, we're going to go look at other lenders and they kind of say it like, I hope I'm not hurting your feelings. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to hear. This is good. This is good. Right. Have multiple agents you work with multiple attorneys for different things, accountants, like property managers, like you got to have connections with people and wholesalers is a perfect example. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody when they're, you know, completely slammed and super busy, when you need them the most and you haven't built it, I mean, that who's, who's, whose issue is that? I mean, that's your fault. Yeah. So build those relationships early on, grow your network. And that's another thing that we've found that the people that focus on networking and building their, their connections with people are the ones that are, are getting through this, um, this market the way it is yeah. right now. Is because the more people you know, the more connections you have, the more relationships you have, the more opportunities you get. And then most of our, you know, most of our borrowers are, you know, risk takers, but you can't take any risks if you don't have any opportunities. Right. So that's, that's kind of boils down. I feel like I've gone on a tangent here, but that's, that's the name of the game right now. If you want to, if you want to be successful, build that network. And, you know, it's, it's also people to bounce ideas off of. And, you know, when you're struggling, I mean, you you need that network. That's what it's about. No, I, I really like that. And I think, it, I think it's so important um, across multiple realms. And, you know, we're talking about, um, it's kind of funny. So we're, before we jumped on here, you and I were talking about, asked you if you were a golfer and you're like, nah, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't handle, I couldn't handle the ups and downs and things like that, but you're in real estate. So there's no ups and downs in that. So, but whatever. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things of, you know, through this crazy time, like through this crazy market and real estate's always going to be crazy. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. It is a, a complete roller coaster and stuff like that. And I think you mentioned one of the biggest things is like, no matter if you're up, you're down, no matter what you're going through, you need to be able to build connections and always be building connections and things. I know one of the things I always say is like, you know, we get people to reach out to us and be like, oh, well, I, I only want to work from, with Simple when I want to, you know, and they buy properties from Simple Wholesaling. It's like, you need to look at properties wherever, especially right now. You need, to, you need to get on every wholesaler list. You need to talk to everybody that has a property, anybody. Like you need to just, if you, if you want to get to these goals, you've got to find inventory. We'll do our part, but you need to be talking to everybody as well. Um, so I like, I like that you mentioned that too, of like, you know, there might be some deals that, that work for CPL and for you guys to be able to do with investors, but they shouldn't just be limiting their beliefs. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm only going to work with them. I'm only going to do this. I'm only going to like, my suggestion too, is like to everybody is like, especially when you're starting off, just build multiple relationships. If I have two properties, maybe I try one with CPL. Maybe I try one with Longhorn or whoever to see how, see what works for me, for me. You know, maybe I like the people over here. Maybe I pay a little bit more, but I like the people better. I like that, you know, opening up your, you know, kind of your, well, your, your mind and trying to figure out who you want to work with is almost just as important as, you know, kind of the money line and, and things like that. So what I want to kind of ask you, Constantine is, especially when people are starting off and they're looking to build connections with you guys or a wholesaler or, a, you know, a property manager or anything like that. When you're when specifically talking about a lender um, and a hard money lender or private money lender, what are some things that that an investor can do to kind of get a good foot in the door, make them look make themselves look pretty good for you guys? You know, kind of be prepared to go down and have that first meeting with you and your team and saying like, "Hey, I'm ready to go. I'm a serious investor. Here's what I here's what I have. What do I need from you? What do you need from me? That type of thing. How, what's a good way to kind of get that started? Great question. I mean, first and foremost is being proactive. That's, that's huge for us. Like if you, if you, if you come to us under fire with a deal and you're like, I need to close by the end of the week, it creates urgency. Doesn't allow us to build that relationship. Doesn't allow us to really understand, you know, is this the right fit for you? We don't even know who you are. right? Right. So it's the people that come to us early and say, Hey, I'm just, I'm building my team are, I mean, huge first impression. Um, preparation is, is really big too. Um, well, before I get into preparation, something that people over overlook is really the basic communication. That's, I mean, that, when you don't know somebody, you're looking for the little things to understand them. And communication is one of our values, open and honest, straightforward, have those hard conversations, meaningful conversations, right? So communicate, 
communicate well, communicate regularly, right? It's, it's, it's all about those little things. If you, if you, if you really need us and we call you and you don't call us back in three days and then, you know, you're still got down crunch time. I mean, that's, that's bad communication. Yeah. So communication is big. Next is, is, um, being prepared coming into these meetings, knowing the project, knowing where you want to go. Um, again, some of the things that set up, set other, other borrowers apart is people who have come in and they've got, you know, here's my plan. This is what I want to do. This is the lane I'm sticking in, right? That's another whole other topic. Why people fail. You know, there's a lot of shiny objects in real estate. Oh yeah. And, you know, it's hard to, it's tempting. I, I, I have to remind myself all the time where it's like, you're a lender. Focus on lending. Yep. Just repeating it over and over again. Might sound like I'm crazy if, when you walk in the office and I'm doing it by myself, but like you gotta be, you gotta keep yourself in that lane. Uh, but you can't keep it if you don't, if you don't establish it. Yeah. So knowing where you're going, understanding the projects, and and just coming prepared with spreadsheets, you know, showing us what you've done, the work you've put into this is huge. I mean, we'll yeah. work with when we when, the, the main criteria that we look for is, is your, how you, how you do in the new borrower meeting. Yeah. You know, our new borrower meetings will go anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. When I was doing them, it was, I mean, they had to get me out of the room because it was, they were just too long. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's, that's the meat of how we determine if we want, if you're the right fit for CPL. Yeah. And we're very particular with who we work with. Cause again, we're long-term focused. So we don't want to work with someone that, doesn't jive with us or jive with our values because you know, to be honest, life is just too short. Yeah. So that's, those are the biggest tips I can give you or I can give any new investor. No, that's, that's really good stuff. That, that's so valuable and things. So and I know um, Constantine, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off and we're going to come back here with another episode and kind of do a two parter here. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff to get into this first episode. We focused a lot on kind of the people and the connections and things like that. Next, next episode, I want to come back with a little bit more of kind of the money part of it and the nuts and bolts and like the kind of the down and dirty of working with a lender and what people need to be prepared for, some mistakes that we're getting in, some tips and things like that. So we're going to come right back with another episode, but this is a wrap for this episode of the Indie Investor Pod and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.